Indian EB1A I-140 approved after two denials. Hello everyone, welcome to New Wayming Law Group's YouTube channel. Today we discuss a recent EB1A I-140 approval which is special. The case was filed for our client from India and approved after the third try. This applicant received his PhD degree in India several years ago and came to the United States right after that. Therefore, even though he has already applied EB1A three times, he is still quite young. He is a postdoctoral researcher in California, and his EB1A I-140 application was submitted to the Nebraska Service Center, the NSC. When the most recent petition was filed, he had around 10 publications, mostly in journals such as OncoTarget and PLOS1, and he is not the first author for the majority of those publications. Those papers were cited a couple hundred times. As we can see, this background, when judged by just the numbers, is not particularly strong for EB1A as of now. At the time his first two applications were filed, the numbers were even lower, and those applications were, unfortunately, denied in 2018 and 2019 respectively. We worked with him from the very beginning and helped him prepare and resubmit the third application with no additional legal fee. The third time's the charm. His application was finally approved, this time smoothly, without RFE. We emphasized his original research contributions, recognition by peers, the impact to his research field as a whole, etc. This client was born in India, which suffers a long backlog in EB2 and EB3 categories. In view of this, many applicants from India strive to pursue EB1 approvals. In the meantime, early submission of the I-140, even in EB2 category, such as National Interest Waiver, NIW, can help Indian applicants. For example, if you file NIW I-140 first and the case is approved, you will have an earlier priority date, which is the filing date of NIW. After that, if your background strengthens and you can apply EB1A, or if you obtain employer sponsorship for EB1B or EB1C, you can apply EB1 I-140, and in the meantime maintain the earlier priority date based on your NIW. In this way, you, if born in India or China, can greatly shorten the waiting time for green card. The corresponding code of federal regulations text says, Retention of Section 203B, 1, 2, or 3 priority date. A petition approved on behalf of an alien under sections 203b, 1, 2, or 3 of the Act accords the alien the priority date of the approved petition for any subsequently filed petition for any classification under sections 203b, 1, 2, or 3 of the Act for which the alien may qualify. In the event that the alien is the beneficiary of multiple petitions under sections 203b, 1, 2, or 3 of the Act, the alien shall be entitled to the earliest priority date. Statistical data released by the U.S. federal government shows applicants from India and China already constitute a very high percentage of all EB-1 cases. For example, more than 40% of all approved EB-1C cases were for applicants from India. More than two-thirds of all approved EB-1B cases were for applicants from India and China. More than half of all approved EB-1A cases were for applicants from India and China. And, with more and more applicants, it is already more difficult than before to obtain the important EB1 I-140 approval. To deal with this situation, it is wise for suitable applicants to apply NIW I-140 first, or at least apply NIW and EB1 together, to secure an early priority date, which can help you greatly if you were born in India or China. Furthermore, as we know, NIW is a self-petition and does not involve employers. With NIW I-140 approval, you can extend H-1B beyond the six-year limit. Your spouse, if holding H-4 visa, can apply H-4 EAD and work for basically any employer. And even if you change jobs or leave the United States, you can still come back later and file I-485 Adjustment of Status or obtain Immigrant Visa based on your approved NIW I-140. In view of this, you should consider taking action and starting this NIW process, no matter if you are a recent graduate, a postdoc or visiting scholar, a professional worker, dependent who is not working now or is in transition between jobs or leaving the U.S., or currently live outside the United States. For more information, please email us at info at nwmlaw.com. Thank you and best wishes.